Access and Aesthetics is a partnership project exchanging promising practices and exploring techniques that we can use within the arts and disability sector. It's particularly challenging traditional norms and expectations of performance. So we're looking at what disability brings to aesthetics on stage. We're looking at embedding access within performance for both performers and for audiences. As a partnership, we'll discuss barriers to inclusion, what our artists need and what our organisations need to support their work. A lot of it is about how it looks on stage. There's preconceived ideas about how something should look. And quite often, people with disabilities don't fit in with that preconception. So it's about changing the aesthetic. Yes, I think we have a, a very challenging path to, to walk through. It's about access for not only for the audience, but also for the people on stage. There's lots of different barriers. Everyone's different. Everybody will have a different need. I think what everyone is aiming for, to share best practices on inclusion in performances and about the quality of the performances and how to reach the right audiences and how to reach the big audience. To the people with different, we need to a little bit more things to, to be equal. Uh, but we will try and we are working in that way. More is coming. So there are many people who really believe that culture and art has the power to change the world. I think the way that you know, everyone's bonded together and supported each other is always lovely and it's always a little bit unexpected because you'd never know how things are going to go. But everybody has been really supportive of each other. The people running you know, the workshops have been supported by you know, everyone from other countries. So that's been nice. If you just find a way, find a reason to do something new, and then many people gather together with knowledge, you know, everything can happen in a very short time. Already we have thought about new things that we can use when we come home, and, and things that we want to do that we never have thought about. We want to make work which is accessible and that uses access tools, but we don't want to make work that's dense and overloaded. The work still has to be beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. The work still has to be accessible and inclusive, but it doesn't have to be too dense. All the description uh, the resources, I think they can be a very useful tool for the blind people. For instance, I have a friend uh, that is blind and we, will, we see the same performance and we got completely different experiences. And I think there is a range of um, potential tools that can be used uh, for blind people when seeing the performance. We are a partnership of practitioners and artists working in inclusive practices. We want to learn from each other, we want to share practice and we want to develop our art forms and move those along. The best experience was to, to learn some tools of the other uh, areas, artistic areas, that we don't have in uh, Portugal or we don't uh, used to work in our company as the circus and the um, music. So it was really a challenge to, to work on it and uh, also to understand how they, they work here as a company and how they, they find the, the tools to teach the, these artistic areas. Uh, then about clowning, which is of course, I think that's, it has a deep meaning. I think it's a pathway to get more acquainted with yourself and also the connection and the sharing what you make with others. It's something what you cannot find without the nose. Uh, interesting thoughts to, to work with humans, because humor is, is hard. I think maybe it's the hardest thing to work with uh, on a stage, because you don't really know how does our actors understand what is their humor and what is our humor and what is the audience humor. So, so it's, it's kind of hard thing to do, but it's also kind of important uh, to reach. It's a good feeling to reach. The laughing, the, the happiness. 
And do you put your mind into your fingers? Mind in your fingers, you're thinking about your, about your fingers. And where do your fingers lead you? Follow the star, anything. Great. And will you take that back and use that in your work at Headway? Yes, I do. Take it back at um, my Headway because I don't have to do it for. And are you going to run some workshops with your group? In Headway, I'm going to set him. And we all workshop with um, our partners. Great. Do you think you'd be able to teach some of the others your dance skills? We can teach, yes. Because um, they're hoping today, but they're not going to teach them today. Um, I was wondering why it's so challenging today. Yeah, I, I really lo love the, the dance workshops where, where you get time to really go into your body and you and you have to to work with yourself and, and in the beginning it's it's people are a little bit shy and a little nervous but but as you work a, a long process you, you see they melting up and, and doing these things i seen our actors doing things i've never seen before so so that is one of the highlights get to know each other so you can work like a strong group because that's very important. Everybody has to be part of the team and everybody has an important role. It's uh, all the time it's about a, a conversation, it's about sharing and I think for me at this moment I think my, my work, my main work, it's about sharing all the time. And also doing some community clowning which I feel is the somehow a really good way to make people to communicate with each other as the Red Nose is uh, giving us tools to communicate though we don't have a shared language. We're working with the ambitions of disabled performers who've realised their potential and we're looking at creating platforms so that they can get their work out there, so they can get their work to a wider audience. We're looking at bringing our audiences along with us, so if we're looking at new types of aesthetics, we're looking at what disability brings to aesthetics, we're looking at bringing our audiences along with us so we develop an understanding together. I, I often not go to so much, many rehearsals. I want to go to the premiere and I want to be fulfilled with something. For, for me, that's kind of the, 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 the key issue with every culture thing. It has to touch me in some way. I can be glad, I can be angry, I can be sad, but it had to touch me in one way. Uh, some emotions have to, to be started. So, so I often keep away from the rehearsals so I can go there and say, do I feel anything? It has been so much fun this week. Like, it feels like it's in another family for me. I've been really impressed by the way people have remembered things from the last two visits, which were two years ago, and they've brought all that into the work they're doing here. You know, when you see changing attitudes, you, you see people coming more together, sharing the same vision, finding each other and sharing. The thing what I've, I've noticed is something what I already have known, but the, the feeling and the understanding of this becomes me more clearly and stronger and it's about connection and about interaction that you don't need a spoken language. But I think that's the, the art of uh, interaction and the art of connection is what I'm like aiming all the time. That that's, that's the most important thing and nothing else in fact matters so much. The art form can be a tool uh, for, for the art to happen but the, the connection is the most important thing what I want to like catch. All in all, we want to make beautiful work, which is not technically overloaded, which is not visually dense, but is universally communicated. <laughs> <laughs>